In this lab, we're going to look into the file and folder structure of a typical Linux operating system. So go ahead and open up the computer from the places menu. And once it's open, we want to go inside the root directory where we were in the last lab. And to get there, we actually have to click on other locations and then double click on computer. And now we're back at the root directory. But let's actually look at some of these folders a little bit and review what they actually contain. And now the ones that you'll run into the most when you're first getting started with all this are the slash bin folder that contains all the essential binary executable files and commands used by the system and all users. We're actually going to be using a bunch of those very soon. We also have the slash Etsy that holds all of those system-wide configuration files and settings. The slash user, USR, that contains all of the user-related programs and libraries and data shared across the system. The slash user bin holds all of the user executable binaries and commonly used commands. The slash var, that stores all the variable data like logs, spool files, and temporary files that may change in size during system operation. The slash dev actually represents device files. That allows access to hardware devices through a file interface. Next, we have the slash home. And that's just a home directory for all the regular users where they can store personal files and configurations. Then the slash mount or slash MNT, that's the directory to mount temporary file systems or external devices. Next, the slash opt, that's used for optional software packages. So that's where you might find something that's not actually normal or traditional to that Linux environment. Next, we have the slash proc folder. And this is an important one. This actually is a virtual file system really inside of that folder. And it provides information about running processes and system configuration. And then finally, we have the slash root folder. That's the home directory for the root user. The root user is the system administrator account. And that account has full control over the Linux system. And yeah, that's a lot to remember. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. There's no way that you're just going to memorize all that at first. Consider that just to be a general orientation. And the more we use Linux, the more we interact with these folders and do different things inside of the GUI and the command line in the future, it'll make more sense when you're actually using these folders and commands instead of just looking at them. Speaking of which, let's look in the home folder. So if we open up this folder, we'll see our Ubuntu user. And if we double click that folder, we can actually see all the folders that we saw before. This can be considered going down the file system, down folders. And if we click back, that'll go back up the file system, bringing us back to the root directory. Okay, now note that root folder. There's a big X on it because it's protected. Now don't get confused with the root folder and the root directory. The root folder is just for the root user. That's an entirely different thing. The root directory is, as we've mentioned, where everything originates from. But the root user is that system administrator account. And they have to have a home folder as well, just like you with Ubuntu. And their home folder is that root folder, as mentioned before. All right, now let's look at that proc folder, that virtual file system, as I mentioned. And I know, what does that actually mean, right? So an easy way to think about it is that the files and directories under proc are not actually files on the disk. They actually only exist in memory and they're generated dynamically for ease of access and use, like this file over here of version. This allows us to get a scope of what the Linux version is. We also have uptime. This is just a running container of the current uptime of the operating system itself. We even have memory info. And again, these are just dynamically generated files that they're running in memory. They don't actually exist on the disk. They'll start up and disappear as the operating system is in use. And what this actually does, if you think about it simply, is that it's like a window to the inner workings of the operating system. And it's very useful for monitoring and troubleshooting. And the reason why it's so useful is because the format that they're in are files. Everything is a file in Linux. And whenever we need to get information about the system or important information, we can literally just read from these files as we need. And that's really, really simple compared to interacting with really complex databases that we might see in other operating systems and software. And all of those folders that we saw above, those folders are just process numbers. And inside of those folders are just process files. And we're going to come back to this once we start interacting with the command line.
But just remember that in Linux, everything is represented by a file. And inside of all these files is just text. So all the data that we need at any given moment, at any given time within Linux is just behind a file. See you in the next lab.